Um, he was born in uh, southern Indiana, in English Indiana, uh, but then uh, it, within, by the time he was two years old, they had moved to Louisville, Kentucky, um, where his father was a, a house builder, a farmer, and um, uh, he lived there for quite some time. At the age of 14, uh, a faithful Sunday school teacher, Miss Daisy Hawes, uh, led him to the Lord in Sunday school, and he joined the Cedar Creek Baptist Church at, at that time. And I want to say he was born in 1909, and, and you know, the thing about Dr. Ryerson is many of, many of us have heard him preach. If you haven't heard him preach, many, maybe most of us have been touched by his ministry, and I'll explain that in just a minute, but uh, um, a modern-day Baptist hero. And um, something that some people may not know is he was gifted with, with um, a phenomenal uh, singing voice, and um, he took professional voice, uh, voice lessons as a young man, and he became quickly, quickly he was singing on the radio on that day, uh, became widely known in the college productions of University of, uh, of Louisville, and uh, doors began to open for him in the world of secular music. Um, he was offered a very lucrative contract by the Nashville Symphony, Nashville, Tennessee Symphony, um, that promised to really to, to shoot him to the top of the opera world. And uh, the Lord was working his heart, and, and um, he, he turned down that, that lucrative contract uh, because he felt it was not what the Lord wanted to do. And uh, as I said, he refused to sign that contract. At the same time, God was calling him to preach. And so praise the Lord, he answered that call and um, didn't take that contract with, with Nashville. We'd have a whole different story had, uh, had, that, had that happened. And so he began to pastor. He pastored a little church while he was going to Bible College in uh, Germantown, Tennessee. And it was there that, um, I, I guess the thing that he talks about, or talked about that, that really touched his heart was his discovery of the truth of the second coming of Christ, the imminent return of the Lord. And um, this became um, really the uh, impetus for his faithful service and, and his fervent soul winning. Um, that truth really, um, really dealt with him the rest of his life. And um, um, he was just 10 months in that ministry in that church in Germantown, Tennessee, when he was kind of overwhelmed by an offer from one of the country's largest churches, one of the South's largest churches, Temple Baptist Church in Memphis. And it was there, he said, or they asked him to take over the music and visitation ministries. Well, I say he was overwhelmed because to him that was really amazing uh, that, that such a large church would ask him to become pa uh, de uh, the assistant pastor. And really, he didn't pray about it at all. He, he without, without consulting the Lord, he accepted the call. Um, upon arriving there, almost immediately, he knew it wasn't God's will. And within a few months, he would resign and take another small church in Greenbrier, Tennessee, um, where the Lord wonderfully blessed him there. Then in 1935, the Lord called him into uh, full-time evangelism. Um, he would work in and around uh, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, he, was, he was a full-time evangelist for about two years and conducted over 50 revivals in, in that area of the country. While he was in, uh, in that area, he met his future wife, Miss uh, Carolyn uh, Allen, and in, in October of 1937, uh, they would be married. And then within a month later, the guy called him out of uh, evangelism and to pastor church, the First Baptist Church in Fairfield, Alabama, in November of 1937. The, the Robinsons had four children, um, Leanne, John, June, and baby Joy. Joy um, would die as a baby at, at two months old, and uh, many of you will know uh, the name Camp Joy in Wisconsin, and that, is, that camp is named after her. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but uh, is named after uh, Joy Robertson, uh, the little girl who died at the age of two. But what we know about Dr. Robertson is, uh, began in 1942 when he was called to be the pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church in, in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, he, he fought that call for a long time. He didn't, he didn't want to go there for some reason. Um, but uh, the Lord made it clear that he should go to Chattanooga. And so Dr. Robertson would go. And for 40 years and six months um, uh, until he uh, resigned that church, he he invested himself wholly into that ministry, uh, the city of Chattanooga and the surrounding, surrounding counties. Um, 
Pastor Robinson was, was loved as a pastor, as an educator, uh, confidant and friend uh, by those he came in contact with. And um, these are amazing numbers, but if you followed his ministry, um, more than 61,000 people would be saved and baptized under his ministry in those four years. Just an amazing ministry there in Chattanooga. But in 1946, then, he founded Tennessee Temple University to uh, train, train uh, young men and women for, for God's service. And the history of that school until uh, he resigned in 1982 is, is also an amazing story. Uh, literally tens of thousands of pastors and missionaries would go from that school to serve the Lord, many of them uh, still serving the Lord, of course. And uh, they would serve the Lord around the world. And, and uh, there were three major things that he did, I think, that kind of stand out in, in Highland Park. Um, he, uh, of course, he had Camp Joy. And that was really a, quite a ministry uh, over the years. Over 3,000 young people would go to, have gone to Camp Joy every summer for, well, I don't know, 50 or 60 years now, free of charge. Um, many, many, um, of course, being saved up there, um, just quite a ministry, Camp Joy. Um, he had a, um, a, a thriving like a church planting ministry around the area of of the county where he lived in. Uh, actually, they established 73 churches in three, in three states around the area of Chattanooga. And actually that, his, his purpose there was to reach people that were primarily in the rural areas that, that, that weren't near the big cities, that were way out in the country, um, and uh, uh, really, you know, backwoods of the south there. And uh, he, he began, uh, that church began 73 churches in that three state area. Really, really think about that. That's really amazing uh, what, what happened there. Um, Dr. Robinson continued to preach well past his 95th birthday, and he passed away and went to be the Lord on April 29, 2007, at the age of 97. And um, I say that our lives have been touched by this man. Um, I don't know that he's ever spoken here, but I know that some of our favorite preachers uh, that have spoken here are graduates of Tennessee Temple. Uh, I think of Dr. Bob Kelly. Um, uh, David Cloud, Dr. Mike Allison, to name a few that, that uh, you remember their testimonies about them being in school and, and how the Lord, uh, the Lord blessed them in school. And that's the, that's the college they were in under Dr. Roberts' ministry. And um, he said the heartbeat of his ministry and his message would be summed up by, the, by his life verse, which is Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And I think his life could be summed up with the word faithfulness. Um, faithful man and uh, serving God for all those years. Um, he was faithful uh, to the Lord in the ministry for over 65 years, um, key leader, uh, uh, larger than life leader, um, uh, one of the most influential uh, leaders in fundamentalism in the last century. And I want to thank the Lord this morning for the ministry and, and the faithfulness of his servant, Dr. Lee Robertson. <laughs> 